Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. My friends in Jesus and Mary, from 1945 to 1959, the mother of Jesus appeared in the city of Amsterdam some 50 plus times with a critical message for us today. These apparitions were given local church approval by Bishop Joseph Marianus Punt, the Bishop of Harlem, Amsterdam, on May 31st, 2002. Now, many of you have heard of the message of the Lady of All Nations, but perhaps through time and circumstance have not yet been able to appreciate its meaning and why it is in fact a message for you today. So our task is to summarize the heart of the message. What did Our Lady say under this title, Lady of All Nations? And, and what does she ask you to do as this message is quintessentially a message for now? She will literally say, the time is now for this message and also for the principal request she will make in this message, and that is a request for a new and a final Marian dogma. Well, let's summarize the messages from 1945 through 1951. This is commonly seen as the first part of the messages of the Lady of All Nations. Once again, keep in mind that these messages were granted a consta de supernaturalitate by the local bishop. That means that the bishop declared that these messages consist of a supernatural origin in their essence. And it is the Vatican, the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, that says it is the judgment of the local bishop which must come first. He has the first responsibility. It is first his jurisdiction to make a discernment and an official church statement about authenticity. So everything we're going to talk about today and everything I'm going to read to you, and yes, I will be reading to you, because I don't want the most important messages to, to just be summarized. I want you to hear Our Lady's words. I want you to hear the tone, the tenor. I want you to be able to recognize her voice as you have seen it and, and heard it uh, in terms of both content and in terms of tenor in the great messages like the Miraculous Medal, Lourdes, Fatima, and other church-approved apparitions. So let's summarize the first part of these messages. Our Lady begins to appear in the ending months of World War II. In fact, in March of 1945, she will tell the visionary a very simple Dutch woman by the name of Ida Perdeman, that the war will soon end if people pray the rosary. And in fact, she predicted the month of the end of the war uh, as it took place. And again, encouraging people to pray the rosary as a means of peace, very much in a similar fashion as Our Lady does at Fatima. Well, then Our Lady gives a series of what we might call geopolitical prophecies. What does that mean? It means prophecies about political and social events that have a global or a national impact. For example, Our Lady, through Ida, predicted the communist takeover of China. She predicted the return of Israel as a state, as a sovereign state, which it had not been for centuries. She prophesied a civil war in Korea, and the effects of it would have still dangerous impacts for the future. We have prophecies of war in the Balkans, prophecies of a man walking on the moon, Prophecies of an upcoming church council, which we now know to be the Second Vatican Council. And then prophecies about a great and dangerous spiritual decline throughout the world. She even predicts that there would be economic strife and very particular uh, references of things like currency wars, presently being put forth by China and other countries, and even boycotts between the United States and Europe, which was unheard of up 
to our present era. The purpose of the prophecies was to establish credibility about part two of the message. And I want to read several messages to summarize part two of the message, which will lead up to a request for a final papal dogma, that is, a proclamation by the Pope that Mary is truly the spiritual mother of all peoples in her three aspects, her three motherly aspects, as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. So we're going to see throughout this message a very important theme, and that is that the world is in a state of ongoing moral decay, and the only thing that can happen to remedy this is we return to Jesus on the cross. We pray for a new descent of the Holy Spirit to grace us and to convict us of sin, and that the Pope declare a dogma so that Our Lady can more fully and, 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 and powerfully exercise her roles as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. Because, my friends, those are not just honorary titles. Those are motherly functions which Our Lady seeks to do for us in a full capacity, but which depends on our consent, depends on the consent and the proclamation of the Vicar of Christ, the successor of Peter who holds the keys, to fully and most powerfully manifest, activate, exercise these roles for the church and the world today with the promise of peace. Indeed, a fruit of this proclamation, as Our Lady says, in an echo of her message of Fatima is the intercession of Our Lady for peace. Well, let's go to the messages themselves. I'm going to start with a February 11th, 1951 message where she reveals a prayer. And she says that the prayer holds a, a tremendous power before the throne of God. She literally says a power before the throne of God we cannot comprehend. And she will ask us to pray this prayer both for a new descent of the Holy Spirit, something several popes, Pope St. John XXIII, Pope St. John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI, and Pope Francis have all asked for a new Pentecost, a new descent of the Holy Spirit. But Our Lady says that this prayer will affect this new coming of the Holy Spirit as well as prepare the world and the church for this proclamation. So I go to this February 11th, 1951 message. Our Lady says, quote, All men must return to the cross. Only this can bring peace and tranquility. The visionary says, I am still standing in front of the cross with the Lady. She says to me, quote, Repeat this after me. Do say this prayer before the cross. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, Send now your spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations that they may be preserved from degeneration, disasters, and war. May the Lady of all nations, who once was Mary, be our advocate. Amen. The visionary Ida notes, I am still standing in front of the cross and have said the prayer and repeated the lady's words phrase by phrase. Now I've seen them written in large characters. The lady continues, My child, this prayer is so short and simple that each one can say it in his own tongue before his own crucifix. And those who have no crucifix repeat it to themselves. This is the message which I have come to give you today. For I now come to tell you that I want to save souls. Let all men cooperate in this great work for the world. If only everybody tried to follow this for himself. So, Our Lady's first request is to pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations daily. Once again, if possible, before the crucifix, if not, praying it to yourself. You can get this prayer uh, on the internet in, in 60 different languages with some 60 different imprimaturs by different cardinals and bishops throughout the world. A quick note on the prayer, the phrase, who once was Mary, which Our Lady originally had in the prayer, uh, was changed 
in 2006 by the request of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith to avoid any pastoral misunderstanding, and it was changed to the Blessed Virgin Mary by the local bishop, Bishop Punt. In 2018, Bishop Punt also gave permission for an alternative phrase, Mary Co-Redemptrix and Mediatrix, which encompasses the titles which are not only in the message, but part of her principal request for the dogma. So both the standard form, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the newer approved form, Mary Co-Redemptrix and Mediatrix, are acceptable forms of this prayer. Let's go on to her first mention specifically of the dogma. Now this will be April 15th, 1915. And she is speaking about the image. Now here is the image, the image of the Lady of All Nations. You will see that Our Lady is standing in front of the cross on top of a globe and there are many sheep representing the different nations on the globe. Uh, many of the sheep are looking away from the cross, only a few are looking towards the cross, and this indicates Our Lady's mission to return the cross of Jesus Christ to the center of the world. She then says in this April 15, 1951 message, quote, this picture will precede a new dogma. Now I will explain it to you, so listen carefully. The Son came into the world as the Redeemer of men, and the work of redemption was the cross, with all of its sufferings, both of body and of spirit. She goes on, I repeat, the Son came into the world as the Redeemer of mankind. The work of redemption was the cross. He was sent by the Father. Now, however, the Father and Son want to send the Lady throughout the whole world. In the past, too, she went before the Son and followed him. For this reason, I am now standing on the world, on the globe. The cross stands firmly fixed and planted in it. The lady, however, really stands here as the co-redemptrix and advocate. About this, much controversy will be raised. The church, Rome, however, should not be afraid to take up the struggle. It can only make the church stronger and more powerful. This is what I say to the theologians. Furthermore, I say to them, give this matter your serious attention. Once again, I say, the Son always chooses the humble and lowly for this work. So in this first message describing the prayer, uh, excuse me, de describing the dogma specifically, she mentions that Jesus is the Redeemer of the world, but now the Father and the Son send Mary, send the Lady, to further the work of redemption. And note, she says specifically, that the Vatican, that Rome, the Church should not fear this. There will be controversy, but Our Lady will overcome. In fact, she literally says that the Vatican, the Church, will grow stronger in this fight. Now, we go to an April 29th, 1951 message, and she's going to explain this even further. So she says, and again, I want you to hear these words from Our Lady so you can get a sense of their meaning, their richness, and, and even uh, their authenticity because it has the tone of the mother and also the tone of a mother concerned about her earthly children. So from April 29th, 1951, she says, and I quote, I stand here as the co-redemptrix and advocate. Everything should be concentrated on that. Repeat this after me. The new dogma will be the dogma of the co-redemptrix. Notice I lay special emphasis on co. I have said that it will arouse much controversy. Once again, I tell you that the church, Rome, will carry it through and silence all objections. The church, Rome, will incur opposition and overcome it. The church, Rome, will become stronger and mightier in proportion to the resistance she puts up in the struggle. My purpose and my commission to you is none other than to urge the church, the theologians, to wage this battle. For the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit wills to send the lady 
chosen to bear the Redeemer into this world as co-redemptrix and advocate. I have said, this time is our time. By this, I mean the following. The world is caught up in degeneration and superficiality. It is at a loss. Therefore, the Father sends me to be the advocate, to implore the Holy Spirit to come. For the world is not saved by force. The world will be saved by the Spirit. Now let me stop real briefly in this message because it's such a packed message to, to underscore the importance of what Our Lady is saying here. She's coming to emphasize the cross of Jesus Christ. She's coming as the co-redemptrix. She will say in later messages, this is already in all of your books, and that's true. This is not a new doctrine, my friends. Mary has been cited and, and taught and preached and, and, and uh, venerated as the human co-redemptrix with Jesus, the divine redeemer, specifically since the 14th century, and theologically from the early days of the church when she was called the new Eve with the new Adam. Back in the second century, uh, St. Irenaeus taught that she was the cause of salvation for herself and the whole human race. Why? Because she brought us Jesus. So this is nothing new. But it's time that this be emphasized, that this be proclaimed, that it be celebrated because it's the will of Jesus himself. And that the church will grow stronger to the degree she fights for this truth. I want to end this message with this very important quote. In the sufferings, both spiritual and bodily, the lady, the mother, has shared. She has always gone before. As soon as the Father had elected her, she was the co-redemptrix with the Redeemer, who came into the world as the man-god. Tell that to your theologians. Listen carefully to this very important line. I know well the struggle will be hard and bitter. And then the lady smiles to herself and seems to gaze into the far distance, but the outcome is already assured. Here is the mother of God telling you and me, the dogma will be, it will happen. It will be a fruit of the church. It will be an action by the Pope, and this will bring great peace to the world. Now, the sooner it happens, the more grace, the less tragedy. And that's why she calls us to specifically pray that prayer of the Lady of All Nations, and as we'll see in a, in a message upcoming, to pray for the Pope and to petition the Pope for the proclamation of the dogma. I want to continue though with the message because I want you to hear this message in a way that helps you uh, uh, have a summary of the key elements of the message itself. We go to a May 10th, 1953 message, which is actually a message from Our Lady to the Pope himself. Uh, listen to this message as she specifies a request to the Vicar of Christ. Again, May 10th, 1953, she says, and I quote, I have, o I have come today to give you a special message. Ask the Holy Father if he would kindly say and lead all nations in saying the prayer with Mary, the co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate under the title of the Lady of All Nations which she has given to the world. Say to him, Apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, teach your people this simple but profound prayer. It is Mary, the Lady of all nations, who is asking this of you. You are the shepherd of the church. Of the Lord Jesus Christ, tend to your sheep. Know well that great and threatening dangers are hanging over the church, over the world. Now the moment has arrived when you should speak of Mary as the co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate under the title of the Lady of All Nations. Why is Mary asking you to do this? It is because she is sent by her Lord and Creator, so that by means of this prayer and this title, she may save the world from a universal calamity. You know that Mary wishes to come as the Lady of All Nations now she is asking you that the nations might hear this title from you, Holy Father. So, very profound, very important. 
This is Our Lady asking the Pope to pray the prayer and to lead the nations in the praying of the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, specifically as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. My friends, do you get a sense about the peaceful urgency of this message now? She's saying, and she has said specifically, that the prayer can save from a universal calamity. In our following program, uh, in, in, in other uh, elements, we're going to talk about other messages that confirm this. So this is the mother of Jesus, the mother of God, and our mother asking the Pope to pray the prayer, and as we're going to see, to proclaim this truth so that she can intercede to save us from a universal calamity. One might say, well, why can't she just do it without us? And the answer is because God respects our freedom. And that gives a responsibility to our freedom. For example, answering her call, responding to her call to pray the prayer, and as we're going to see, her call to petition the Holy Father. I want to go to a next message. This is April 4th. I just want to read two more of these messages, but again, I don't want you to just get my sermon. I want you to hear Our Lady's tone and, and, and the import uh, and the irreplaceable formation of Our Lady's words. This is an April 4th, 1954 message specifically to theologians. Now, why do you think Mary, uh, our Blessed Mother, would give a message specific to theologians? For two reasons, my friends. Number one, she's calling theologians in a special way to battle for this dogma. Number two, sadly, uh, we have to report that it's principally been theologians that have been putting up obstacles uh, and arguments against this crowning of Our Lady. So Our Lady is trying to give the full measure of opportunity for theologians to do their tasks to help bishops and ultimately to help the Holy Father with this proclamation. So this is April 4th, 1954. Our Lady says, quote, Once more I am here. Listen well. From the outset, the handmaid of the Lord was chosen to be co-redemptrix. Tell your theologians that they can find it in all of their books. The lady pauses briefly, then smiling to herself, she says, almost in a whisper, I am not bringing a new doctrine. I am now bringing old ideas. She waits, then continues, because the lady is co-redemptrix, she is also mediatrix and advocate. Not only because she is mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, but, and mark this well, because she is the Immaculate Conception. Brief pause here for explanation. This is such beautiful, classic Mariology. In fact, a cardinal named Cardinal Carol Wojtyla, about 10 years before he was elected uh, as Pope, on a, on a homily on December 8th of 1973, uh, made reference, uh, this is you know, closer to six uh, years before he's elected, but he says literally, remember Mary is the co-redemptrix, not just because she's mother of God, but because she's first the Immaculate Conception. What does that mean? It means Mary was created full of grace to be the perfect partner with Jesus in the work of redemption, so that Mary wouldn't be a double agent. But the future John Paul II says almost verbatim exactly what Our Lady says. Also, it was true that in all the major Mariology books of the 1940s of the 1950s, it defended and taught the title of Mary Co-Redemptrix. Then she goes on, Theologians, I ask you, do you still have objections to this dogma? You can find these words and ideas. I ask you to work for this dogma. No, fear nothing. There will be a clash. The other indeed will attack you. But the simplicity of this dogma lies in these last thoughts, which Mary, the Lady of All Nations, puts before you today. Do fight and ask for this dogma. It is the crowning of your Lady. So here's our Blessed Mother calling us, in, in a special way, calling theologians. But of course, it's not unique. It's not only to theologians. Defend this truth. Teach her roles as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. It is the doctoral teaching of the church. John Paul II used the title co-redemptrix seven times. He called Mary mediatrix of all grace eight times. And he calls her the advocate dozens of times. This is the doctrine of the church. And that's why Our Lady is calling theologians. But all of us defend this, teach this, fight for this dogma. It is the truth of Our Lady. 
Now, I want to give you one last message, and I, I thank you for your patience for, for listening to the words. Again, it's, you deserve to hear it from her, not from me, from Our Lady herself. This is arguably her single most important message, May 31st, 1954. And I'm just going to read aspects, the key elements of it. She says, and, and I should say for context, May 31st in 1954 was the feast of Our Lady as the Mediatrix of All Graces. She says, and I quote, Once more I am here. The co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate is now standing before you. I have chosen this day. On this day, the Lady will be crowned. Theologians and apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, listen carefully. I have given you the explanation of the dogma. Work and ask for this dogma. You should petition the Holy Father for this dogma. Brief pause. Here the Mother of God is asking you and me to petition the Holy Father for this dogma. Why? Because it's Catholic precedence, my friends. That's what happened that prepared the way for the dogma of the Immaculate Conception in 1854. Millions of petitions from you and me, the faithful. And then again, in preparation for the dogma of the Assumption in 1950, uh, over 8 million petitions over nearly 100 years asking the Holy Father to do this. You see, this helps the Holy Father. This supports him in something that clearly heaven wants. So you can easily send a petition to our Holy Father, to Pope Francis. Uh, his, his address is very simple, Pope Francis, Vatican City, 00120. You can even go online to, to a website called Crown Mary and send a petition in, 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 in 60 seconds. But here's the Mother of God asking you to do two things. Pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations daily and petition the Pope for this dogma. That's the great one-two punch of our holy Catholic faith. Prayer and action. Prayer and petition. Let me go back to her message. She then says, uh, and I quote, um, Again, the lady waits a while, then says in a low voice, My prophecy, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, will be fulfilled more than ever once the dogma has been proclaimed. Once again, this dogma is a, a, an aspect of fulfilling scripture. Her great prophecy of Luke 1, 48. Uh, all generations will call me blessed more than ever once the Pope proclaims this dogma to honor her blessedness, but precisely as our mother. She goes on to say, the, from now on, all nations will call me blessed. The lady of all nations desires unity in the Holy Spirit of truth. The world is encompassed by a false spirit, Satan. When the dogma, the last dogma in Marian history has been proclaimed, the Lady of all nations will give peace, true peace to the world. The nations, however, must say my prayer in union with the church. They must know that the Lady of all nations has come as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, so be it. Well, here you have it, my friends. Here's Our Lady saying, the world is encompassed by a false spirit, Satan. Do you know what one of the headlines of today was? It was that there is a satanic temple giving out scholarships to young people who will join in the propaganda of a satanic vision of life, all under the auspices of, of, of the, quote, pursuit of knowledge. That's happening today. We're seeing satanic cults by, by, the, by the exponential uprising uh, and even satanic Luciferians having uh, conferences and having protests for, for one world order. And it doesn't have to be that specific. We can see Satan every time we see a compromise of the truth of Jesus Christ in the fullness of his church, the decapitating of Our Lady's images, which are happening throughout the United States and, and now in, into Europe. Isn't that a clear indication of, of a satanic presence when you're, you're going against the image of all grace, all purity, all goodness. So it's happening now. And that's why this message, the message of the Lady of All Nations, is a message for you today. 
And she's asked us to do two actions. Number one, pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. So really, my friends, I do not hesitate to beg you in Our Lady's name, pray that prayer daily. It, it takes 20 seconds or, or, or 30 at the most. Pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. And secondly, take the effort, which again could be done in 10 minutes of time, write a petition to the Pope. Uh, this Holy Father, Pope Francis, is so open to uh, requests from the faithful. Write to Pope Francis, Vatican City, 00120. Put a line or two saying, Holy Father, please proclaim the fifth Marian dogma. Holy Father, please declaim, proclaim the dogma of Mary as the mother of all peoples. He'll know what you're referring to. But let's support our Holy Father in something that Our Lady has said clearly is a condition for world peace. If Satan is indeed dominating this time, we need the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes to us through Mary. So please do your part to bring, as she says, peace, true peace to the world. Pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. Petition Pope Francis for this dogma. And then let the Holy Spirit act upon the Pope's heart and all those involved in crowning Our Lady with the fifth and final Marian dogma. Let's end by praying the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. And let's, let's also include in our petitions not only the Holy Father, but that people will respond to this critical message of Our Lady asking for true peace, true peace in the world as we pray. In the name of the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degenerations, disasters, and war. May the Lady of all nations, Mary Corredentrix and Mediatrix, be our advocate today. Amen. Thanks so much for being with us with Mary Live. I, I pray that the message of the Lady of All Nations touches your heart and you can respond so that we can really say we did our part to bring true peace to this world. Thanks for being with us. God bless you.